This is John Adams Letters from the Front podcast, March 1915. This podcast looks at life in World War I through the letters of John Adams, who was 23 when he joined up in September 1914. He served with the 9th Service Battalion, Royal Irish Fusiliers, and was involved in many significant events in the Western Front, particularly Passchendaele. After the last podcast went out, my brother Roger contacted me saying, oh, I just found another letter from February 1915. It was too late for the podcast. And that's the thing about history. We keep finding new things about what happened in the past. Although these letters are only a hundred years old, which is a short time in the history of the universe, it's a significant amount of time that we lose touch with things and we lose touch with what actually happened, anything outside the history books. So if you want to keep up to date with all the letters that we do find, and we do uh, keep on transposing letters, I say we, Roger and John are doing the, the vast majority of that, and I'm dealing more with the podcast, but you can go along to the website, and I do encourage you, because this is sort of a companion piece uh, to the website, the website is johnadams.org.uk forward slash letters and you uh, it's a fantastically made up website where you can uh, track John Adams' movements from his mobilization in 1914 right the way through to what happened to him after the First World War, full of pictures and other documents that enhance the history experience. So if you're into the history of World War I and you want to find out more about one person's story, then I suggest you go to johnadams.org.uk forward slash letters. Another thing that has sort of struck me while I was preparing for this, there are names mentioned in some of the letters that I wasn't entirely sure who they were. And if I'm not sure, and this is my family, then how can you be sure? So in a moment or two, we'll have a, a short glossary of who these people are, who the people in John Adams' life in 1915 were. Especially uh, Jeannie, who we have a letter read uh, from her to her mother and where she was at this particular time and who else was in the family, where they lived, just to give you a bit of a background. And we'll try and add this in every time we have somebody mentioned in the letters, add something else in that will give you uh, a bit of a history to who John Adams was and who these people were talking about. As you will hear from the letters, there was another recruitment march in Monaghan this time, but also John Adams is looking forward to Easter and seeing, being a countryman, seeing the changes in the countryside around him, farming seasons that he knows so well. These are John Adams' words, read by his grandchildren and narrated by his great-grandchildren. The people in John Adamson's life during 1915. His father, also called John Adams, died in 1912. Mary Adams is John Adams's mother and the recipient of many of his letters. The oldest child in the family was Mary Jane, known as Jeannie, John's oldest sister. She was born in 1887, so would have turned 28 during 1915. That year, she was working as a domestic servant to Reverend Samuel Chambers, a minister in First Hollywood, Bangor Road, Presbyterian Church. Records show that she emigrated to New Zealand as Jeannie Russell, with her husband David Russell in the 1920s or early 1930s, and died in 1936. The second child, Annie, was also at home. Annie Adams was born in 1889 and turned 26 during 1915. We don't know much about her life, but she seemed to have lived at Lysidium, the family home, until her death in 1966. John was born in 1890. The youngest child was James Meek Adams. Known as Jimmy, he was born in 1895 and would have turned 20 during 1915. Jimmy may have been working at home, and letters imply that he was farming. He would go on to become a skilled cabinet maker, and he died in 1987. The Adams family looked after Lizzie Kernigan, who was probably a cousin and brought her up. This was possibly after her family had died. She seems to have been treated as a sister. She died in 1937. 
The family grew up in South Armagh in the townland of Lysidian, near Kingsmills, White Cross and Besbrook, in a small labels cottage. Jimmy lived there until his death in 1987. Postmark, 4th of March, 1915, Newton Ards. Postcard shows Church Square, Monaghan. The large Dawson obelisk stands on the left foreground. A cannon stands in front of it. The church with a tall spire stands at the right background. A number of figures are milling about near the cannon and two horse-drawn carts travel along the road. Dear Mother, just a line to say that we've got back here again. We had not as good a time as last, but it was very good. I will write you a long letter when I get settled down. You might write and let me know how you are all getting on. We are shifted to Newton Ards now. I remain your loving son, John Adams. 5th of March 1915, from personal notes. Took part in the recruiting march through County Monaghan, terminating in Castle Blaney, lasting one week. D Company, 9th Battalion Royal Irish Fusiliers, Newton Arms, Sunday 7th March 1915. Dear Mother, just a line hoping it finds you in good health, as this leaves me the same at present. I thought I would have a letter for you before this, but I hope you are all well. We had a very good time in the march. We trained at Clonus and stopped one night there. I saw the place where they killed Flachen. It was locked up since. We then trained it to Bally Bay and March Cooked Hill and then to Monaghan where we stopped for two days and then to Castle Blaney and from there back again. This was a wonderful place. I saw the place where that young fellow was killed. I think the stepfather will be hung and I think he was guilty too. I think this is all that I have time for now. Remember me to all at home. I remain your loving son, John Adams. D Company 9th Battalion Royal Irish Fusiliers, Newton Ards, 20th of March, 1915. Dear Mother, just a few lines to say I received your parcel this morning and what was inside. I thank you very much for it. The drawers are all right. I hope I may never worse. The weather is greatly changed the last day. It is simply lovely now like the summertime. It does not be long in changing. I suppose the people are busy at their crops now. They have nearly all in about here now. It is a very early country about here. The ground is very sandy. Tell Jimmy that I will write to him later and tell him all the news, but I have not time now. He might write to me sometime and tell me how he's getting on. Does ever he be at the manse working now? I suppose he will put in the garden for Mr. Jury this year. There is many a change since last year this time, but I hope they are all for the best. I hope the weather is keeping like this for us going home. We don't often get good weather for going home. I think this is all for now. I thank you again for the present. I remain your loving son, John Adams. Postmark, Hollywood County Down, 25th of March 1915. Postcard showing Kenworthy's hydropathic establishment, Southport, a grand house. Dear Mother, I hope you are better. We are all as usual for so far. Isn't it lovely weather? I could just love to go home for Easter. It's well for Jay again, but I might get later on. Tell Annie I will write to her soon if I have time. Write soon and tell me how you are. Is Jay well? With best love, yours sincerely, Jeannie. D Company, 9th Battalion Royal Irish Fusiliers, Newton Ards, 27th of March, 1915. Dear Mother, just a line to say that I received your letter this morning. I am sorry that you are not getting better, but maybe when the good weather you will be alright. I said when I wrote to Annie that we were going to be confined to camp, but I think that will not be to after Easter. I am not giving it for truth, but I think that we will be home from Monday to Friday. But you need not be too much made up, for we might not be at home at all. But you may be sure that if we can get, we will be at home. I think that I will have as much pound and shillings as will bring me home. I will write to you again before that and tell you whether I can get home or not. I think this is all for now. 
We are having lovely weather now. I hope it will continue until after Easter. I remain your loving son, John Adams. Thank you for listening to John Adams' Letters from the Front podcast. To find out more about John Adams and his family, visit www.johnadams.org.uk forward slash letters. And you can email us with your comments or questions at letters at johnadams.org.uk. You can also follow at J Adams Letters on Twitter. The history of the 9th Service Battalion at Royal Irish Fusiliers during World War I is taken from Blackers Boys. Visit them at www.9thirishfusiliers.co.uk. That's with the number 9, not the letter. The podcast will be published 100 years after the letters were written, so it will be published nearly every month. This has been a Mark's Mass production. Thank you.